So it's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I'm here in Castle Rock, Colorado at our Myco World Lab. And today I'm going to be testing the quality of this laminar flow hood. So um, last week I did the unboxing of our flow hood from Myers Mushrooms and we had a lot of questions and concerns about the legitimacy of this flow hood because a lot of times you'll see the fans above the HEPA filter, but there's actually about a six inch case behind this fan uh, or behind the filter with a fan with a blower motor and um, that's what's forcing the air through which is creating the laminar flow. So um, I'm going to be testing the air quality using petri dishes and I'm going to try to lay out our workspace um, so I can figure out what is the cleanest area in this flow hood. So if you don't have all these petri dishes, um, one thing that I like to do to prove that you know the flow hood is working properly is I'll just take a lighter and calibrate it or just kind of search for any dead zones. So if you want to come here and um, look at the flame from this side, so you can see that it's nice and straight, but then as soon as I cross into the flow, it starts to go sideways. So you can tell that it has a nice even air current all the way across. And if there is any sort of turbulence, the flame would probably blow out or stand up straight. So right there, it seems like a little bit weird, but it's still lit. And as I come up into this dead zone, you can see the flame stand up a little more, like right here, but still blowing. So I'm pretty confident that the laminar flow from this hood is going to cover the entire workspace. So another trick you can do is um, if to ensure that your filter is working properly and your fan's running, I'll take my isopropyl alcohol and just spray it on the surface. And if you come from the side here, you can watch the alcohol evaporate from where the fan is towards the edge of the table. So you can see right here it's evaporating. And if you pay attention carefully, you can see the different streamlines where the alcohol is evaporating. So that indicates that there's a good laminar flow. Um, one of the most important things when you're working in front of a, a clean space is that you don't have any weird turbulent angles from the air. But, you know, I'm inspecting this. I, in order to do it scientifically, scientifically you would need a wind a wind gauge and a manometer which detects the difference in air pressure from the chamber to outside the flow hood. I don't have those tools but I can tell you just looking at the pattern that this alcohol is evaporating and with um, using the flame from the um, the lighter that it seems very stable. Alright so now I'm going to open up some petri plates and I'm going to be labeling them and setting them in front of the hood and then we're going to set a timer for five minutes because that's usually the amount of time that I'm having a plate open at the most um, and ideally those plates when they're incubated um, they should come back clean next week so I'm going to be following through with this experiment and we'll see how well this filter performs. So another important um, thing to do when you're doing this calibration is you're going to want to leave one of the plates as a negative control. So I'll just take this first one and write negative control. And the purpose of this 
is I won't even open it so that I know that the plates that I poured were clean in the first place. So these are about a week old and I don't see any kind of growth on them. So I think they're going to work really well for what we're trying to do today. There's a bubble in that one, but that's okay. All right. So when I'm looking at my flow hood, I know that my workspace isn't going to come up to the very end of the filter because this is not as strong of a current as here. So my plan is to put or keep my work zone within these four squares and this one is going to examine the flow from this area down. So this is kind of my setup and then if you want to come take a little bit of an overhead view I'll just label these zones Now I'm labeling it on the auger side so that if there is an incident where the lids get mixed up, um, I'll be able to differentiate it. So, all right. Um, now this is going to be kind of the more sensitive part. Whenever you're working in front of a flow hood, you want to use really slow movements and be methodical, but I'm going to open up these dishes and then we'll be setting a timer for five minutes as soon as I open that first dish and then once the timer's done I'm gonna close them up and then we'll be done so I just uh, sprayed some alcohol on my hands and since this is a horizontal flow hood you always want to work from the back to the front the back is gonna be the cleanest and then the front's going to be the dirtiest. So, all right, I'll open up the first one starting right now. All right, guys, so as those are sitting there, I'm just looking at the condensation on the lids, and it seems to be shrinking. So that's another indication that that laminar flow is working. Um, it's going to take about five minutes to do this test. You can run this in your grow space. Um, if you have DRBC plates, you don't want to use MEA plates because they'll catch any type of bacteria but you can use DRBC plates as a guide when you're working in your grow um, and kind of, I like to draw a map in my grow space and then test the air quality and then go back, clean it, test it again and see how well my cleaning is. So it's a really good tool in mycology to test the, the cleanliness of the grow or um, the workspace in this area. So if any, anyone has any questions, um, feel free to ask some questions. I've got about four more minutes before I'm going to be closing these plates. 
if anyone has any questions, let me know. Um, it would be awesome if you took this time to smash that like button. Um, we're trying to gain some momentum with these Fungi Fridays. And next week, it's going to be Christmas. So my plan is to do some sort of a giveaway. I'm going to be bringing down some cultures and we'll do some live stream event where um, the people watching will do some kind of a raffle. Uh, I might post on social media this week some sort of a raffle, but I would like to, you know, give back to our community of followers. And I've got a bunch of cultures that I'm um, about to put on Etsy, so I'm pretty excited to do that next week. So Fungi Friday number seven, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Um, and then also we just started doing our classes, our class schedule is up. So we're going to start doing them in January, January 16th, 17th is the first weekend. And we're working with Zach from Mushroom Cult. So it's going to be a two day class back to back. Um, we're really excited to do a more hands on intense version of our classes this year. It's going to be start to finish, including some more advanced techniques. Um, we've been working on this for about a year now, so we're really excited to launch these classes. Check out mushroomcult.net if you'd like to sign up. We're also going to be doing some online classes, um, kind of just live demonstrations with Q&A, and that's also available at mushroomcult.net. I think the first one is February 6th for the online class, so stay tuned for that. Um, do we got any questions? All right, guys, so we're just just waiting on these. All right. Alright guys, we got a little bit more to go. So there's still a lot of questions about the airflow. And I mean, I can feel the air coming out. Um, I just crossed my hand over this top plate. So zone four and five, if there's any sort of question, um, these ones are going to be the ones that should show up if there's not a proper airflow. So this is a very thick HEPA filter, about two and a half inches. And there's a giant fan in the back that's pushing the air. Um, like I showed you earlier with the, um, with the lighter, it was pushing the flame horizontal. So I don't know what more I can do, but provide proof that this is creating a sterile work environment. So I'm using MEA, malt extract auger. It's very nutrient dense um, and it will catch anything down to one CFU. So there's the timer. I'm gonna go ahead and close my plates and we will incubate these at 72 degrees for 48 to 72 hours and then I'll just leave them for next week and ideally they should have zero growth and then I'll put a star on four and five because I put my hand above it and if there is proper laminar flow it should you know, possibly contaminate four and five. That would, um, or I mean, if there's not laminar flow. So now I'm just going to seal these up with parafilm.
All right, guys, and whether or not these plates come out clean, um, I just wanted to demonstrate a really good way to calibrate your workspace. Um, if, for example, two and five come back and there's a lot of growth on those plates, then I know that my workspace is going to be much more shallow. Um, so if you know the the flow is being impeded by the size of the filters then my suggestion is just to work really close to the filter um, this hood was intended to be used for bulk inoculations which gets a little bit messy so um, I wanted to preserve my air science flow hood by switching the messier procedures to a larger area and I really like this hood because I think it would be easy to have two people working side by side on this bench so that's kind of the reason why I got this hood um, and I think it's a really great product so far it's very quiet and only the proof is in the pudding so I will keep you guys updated here's my negative control as well and we'll see if we get any growth in the next 72 hours and I'll just keep them um, until next week too and we can go over the results next Friday. Alright guys, thanks for watching and until next time, much love.